Hey friends, it's actually kind of a rough time to be building a PC. I don't know if you know that. I don't know if you've looked at Amazon and Newegg, but a lot of things aren't in stock. Everything's up in the air because of the whole pandemic situation. But I wanted to do a thousand dollar build guide for you guys so that you could see what's in stock, what you can expect to get for your money right now. And I actually have two different options that we can go with depending on what you how flexible you are with that thousand dollar budget and i did my best to make sure that these things were in stock that you should be able to pick them up at least relatively soonly that's the general idea and i'll leave an affiliate link for everything in the video description that we talk about today so you can pick it up and it'll give us a small kickback if you decide to buy any of the components in these build guides so the name of the game is a thousand dollars we're looking at more or less 1440p 60 fps high gameplay or 1080p 144 hertz high gameplay as well and we'll start off with the first more expensive build this goes slightly over the thousand dollar threshold but not to a place where it's just a little bit more so we're gonna start off with the case which i've done like the nzxt h510 and all of the build guides that we've done at this price point because it's such a good value at that 60 to 70 dollar price region well i'm gonna switch it up a little bit i'm going with this montec air x argb which is six, 76 dollars 69 cents comes with two 200 mil fans in the front with rgb a 120 mil fan in the back which is also rgb it looks pretty good the reviews seem to be pretty decent on this and it's not going to set you back too badly we could talk about the CPU, which is going to be the same in both builds, which is the Ryzen 5 3600. It's only $155 right now. There's no reason to get the 3600X or the 3600XT at this price. $155. This is so hard to beat for gaming value. I, you could consider the Ryzen 3 3100 or 3300X, but from what I can see, they're still not readily in stock. I remember seeing that they were on Amazon recently, the 3100 at least, and that was still shipping several weeks out. So 3,600 is the one that you're going to get in stock now. You could consider spending a little bit less, but six cores, 12 threads, really good gaming performance. It does exceptionally well. Then for the motherboard, this is the one that's actually the hardest because I can't find a decent B450 that's going to ship earlier than August 13th. It's just, I can't find it. But the good news is when you typically buy these things that are back ordered on Amazon, they tend to ship out faster than their quoted time. So you may get it sooner. Anyways, it's this Gigabyte B450 Aorus Pro with Wi-Fi, $128 for this. You can get everything that you would need. It doesn't have super fancy features, but it'll support the RAM speed that we're looking at. It'll support 3600. It'll support your graphics card and it'll support the SSD, which we're going to talk about in a second. And the price is an outrageous. Speaking of not having an outrageous price, that's where this Silicon Power one terabyte NVMe drive comes in. It's $129.99. We're going to get a one terabyte SSD in here because this is actually a really good one. It's going to have 3.4 gigabyte per second read speeds, three gigabyte per second and write speeds. It's going to have the proper setup with caching. It's just a good value. One terabyte is going to be enough for most things, your storage drive, in case you want that. Then for RAM, we're going to be going with something a little bit more minimalistic, the Crucial Ballistics 3600 megahertz kit with CL16 cast latency. This is a little bit more than the typical CL18 that you would find at this uh, speed, but for $93, it's not too bad. We're cutting out the RGB, which is saving us a little bit of cash. And I think personally, the black powder coated sticks look really really good 3600 megahertz cl16 that's going to get you the best performance that you can possibly get out of that ryzen 5 3600 cpu so this is a really good idea right here and then for the graphics card this is where i uh, you can spend a little bit more if you want a better cooler. That's kind of where I can uh, advise you change a few things here, but this is the XFX RX 5700 XT with their triple fan cooler. It's all right. It's $380. It's going to keep you in that thousand dollar price point and it'll run games at 1440p 60 FPS. No problem. Power supply. This is also again where we're struggling because of just stock issues everywhere. So this one is in stock. But as you can see, it's a big compromise because it's 600 watt, 80 plus gold, which is gonna power your 5700 XT and Ryzen 5 3600, no problem, but it's non-modular. That's the sacrifice we gotta make right now. If you could find one in stock that's modular, that's about this price point because we're looking at $80 for this one, all the power to you, pick that up instead. But non-modular is kinda like you want, you want in stock and decent price 
sacrifices have to be made and that's basically where the sacrifice is coming in at this point so all being told we're looking at a price point of one thousand forty three dollars and twenty eight cents if you pick up all of the components that i mentioned for this first one which is the montec air x rgb ryzen 5 3600 with the gigabyte b450 Aorus pro wi-fi silicon power one terabyte nvme ssd 3600 megahertz cl16 crucial ballistics ram 16 gigabytes of it mind you the radeon rx 5700 xt from xfx and then a non-modular 600 watt 80 plus gold power supply from thermal tech so 1043 dollars isn't too shabby but i've got a secondary pc build for you that's going to be under a thousand dollars so we're going to cut a few costs here we're going to scale a few things back and we're going to go over that first thing we're going to scale back is the case we're looking at the cooler master q 300 l it's not a great case not not it's not amazing, but it'll work for you. And it's only $48.75. So we're saving quite a bit of money over the Montec Air X. For under $50, you're getting a micro ATX chassis, which is gonna be great because we also swapped out the motherboard. We'll talk about that in a second, but you're keeping the same performance because we're going with the Ryzen 5 3600. But one of the big things about the Q300L is airflow isn't that good. So we're gonna throw in a three pack of 120 mil fans to make up for that difference. $13 here to add in those non RGB fans, which is gonna bring up the total price of the case plus the fans to around $63. So it's still coming in cheaper than the Montec, but it's not. Not necessarily terribly expensive and then you can make sure that you have better airflow in that chassis so fans plus case you still have the Ryzen 5 3600 you're good to go there this is the motherboard we're scaling back to this is the ASRock B450M HDV revision for $70 in stock August 9th so that's about a week from now hopefully you could potentially get it sooner $70 is fine it's going to support everything that you essentially need it has the m.2 drive that you're going to need it has the graphics card slot it has two slots for ram it's cut back on a lot of features you're not going to be able to upgrade your ram unless you go with two 16 gig sticks so it's you're definitely compromising a lot also doesn't have wi-fi but you're saving like half the cost here so this is 69.99 the SSD, we're gonna keep the same. I don't like to sacrifice storage quality just because we're in a budget price point. I always make sure to get an M.2 NVMe SSD. Silicon Power is still looking really good at the $130 price point. RAM, we're scaling back by about $30-ish. We're looking at a RAM speed of 3,600 megahertz still, but we're going with cast latency 18. See, this is, we paid a lot more for that CL16 on the Crucial Ballistics. This is a 16 gig kit, the team group, Dark Z looks all right. It's dark gray. Cool. It's $68. You're saving like 25 bucks. So that's perfect there. GPU staying the exact same. $380 for the RX 5700 XT. Still that 1440p gaming performance. Power supply also the exact same because there's not a lot of other options out there. So you can't really sacrifice on this $80 for the 80 plus gold. So that all totals up to $944.68. So you're coming in a little bit cheaper. You're saving about $100 over the previous build, which is keeping you under that $1,000 price point, but it's coming with a few sacrifices. No Wi-Fi on the motherboard, slightly slower RAM, and then a smaller, uglier case in my opinion, but you're making do with that. You're getting all of the same performance with less of the extra goodies and benefits that come with the $1,043 price build. But in case your budget's exactly $1,000, you still have a $55 wiggle room on this cheaper one, which you can throw in this Seagate Barracuda 7200 RPM hard drive, two terabytes of it. You got that one terabyte NVMe, which is good for most of the games that you're actively playing. And then your two terabyte hard drive, which will be good for Call of Duty because it's just gonna take up the entire thing eventually. And that'll put you nearly exactly at that $1,000 price point. So with both of these builds, it should be roughly the same performance. You're gonna sacrifice a little bit of CPU performance on the cheaper one because of the slower RAM, but it's not gonna be super noticeable. And in case you wanna know how the Ryzen 5 3600 performs with the RX 5700 XT, I'd recommend you check out this video by Zach's Tech Turf. He did this exact benchmark. You can see more or less it was done about a year ago. So the newer games aren't included in those benchmarks, but you can check that out right up there. So you could get a more comprehensive understanding of really where your performance is gonna lie. But a $1,000 PC build 
is doable in the middle of 2020, in the middle of a pandemic. There are PC parts available. There are sacrifices that have to be made in order to make it happen. And in case you need one before the new GPUs and CPUs come out towards the end of this year, this is still a really good option. We're still in the 1440p region. I believe we did a $1,000 PC build previously, and it was also about the same Ryzen 5 3600 with a 5700 XT. I think there were better 5700 XTs available at the time and better power supplies, but we're making do with what's available right now. But let me know what you think of this $1,000 PC build down below in the comments. What would you swap out? What would you choose separately? What would you do differently? Is there anything that you would highly recommend that I didn't potentially include in this? Let me know down below in the comments. And while you're down there, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to Brainist to stay up to date on all of our tech content that we do over here. Big thanks for you to tune in. And with that, I'll bid you adieu. Big thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, friends.